Oh boy, this was an episode of Mob Psycho 100. I mean, goodbye Mob is what they're building up to. I still think what's gonna end up happening is Mob's powers are going to get sealed away and most likely only the normal Mob will be there and Kageyama can actually just be himself no longer suppressing these emotions, but... The fact that you not only bring in, I think it was Season 2's boss, who ends up not being enough to stop Mob, granted, had he not wanted to be a good father and stay alive for his kid, potentially that would have been enough, so that was off the table. Brother comes in, and I mean, I they, they got me, I'm not gonna lie, I legit thought they were about to kill his brother. In hindsight, I'm thinking about, like, why did I feel that way, but in the moment, the way the emotions were going, he was trying to destroy the bouquet, and then the hand comes in and I was like, nothing's going to be enough to stop that. And just the way they kept escalating and escalating and escalating. The fact that we're still not done this season, and I keep saying it's still best Mob Psycho season, just gets better from here. And the fact that we have with one episode to go to wrap up Mob's story, the only way it would make sense to end a show like this, which has been all about a normal kid who wanted to be normal, is anything but normal, thrown into supernatural phenomena, has abilities that are greater than anyone else's, but just is the most average dude imaginable. It only makes sense if the story wraps up in my opinion anyway. Granted, I trust in one's writing completely. Whatever happens is going to be great. But as it stands in my own head, the only way I could see this show wrapping up successfully or in a way that makes sense with the theme and tones are two crucial things. Mob probably not having powers anymore, and Mob getting denied by his crush. Those two things seem like they need to happen to fit the tone and where everything's gone, mainly because when you look at Mob's story, it's literally a slice of life adventure about the most normal kid ever, but the situations surrounding him are absolutely supernatural. But everything about Mob's character from wanting to fit in, wanting to go out with the most popular girl in school, right? Everything about him is so average and normal, and that's the whole point of it, about accepting yourself, finding your place, you know, and just to see where that type of personality can go. The reason I say also him getting denied is it would be the, I think, predictable and cliche row if she said yes because of maybe, oh my god, I thought he was going to die. That's typically how those scenes go, but given how she's had no real, from our perspective anyway, no real connection to Mob outside of general friendship, I think him being denied and accepting that that's part of life, that just because you feel some way doesn't mean another person has to as well, I think it just makes sense if that's how they kind of tie that bow to wrap up the Mob Psycho story. But the fact that, once again, those two average elements, which are the defining aspect of Mob's character, are still being surrounded by this incredible animation that's explosive. Characters are bloody, beaten, and bruised, and you have literally a battle of what is real and what is fake going on inside this psycho body's head, where you have a average, normal kid just trying to hold on and suppress those emotions, which he's been doing for so long. I mean, look at Ritsu, man. That whole, like, flashback saying, like, constantly, I thought... You know, I just wanted to talk to you, wanted to see how you were doing. He used to be such a happy, bubbly kid and had no emotions to see what exploded into this scene, right? The fact that it's now a battle of wills. Can Mob, the average kid, be enough to suppress this insane power, which the beautiful rainbow, like, 100% that flashed on, I thought was just such a nice build-up. It's hard to say exactly where it will go. I definitely, as I just said, I have my ideas on where I think it should go. But I think what has really impressed me over the course of these three seasons of the Mob Psycho 100 story is that one has a way of writing, in a lot of ways, the most typical situations into something so extraordinary that both boil down into the most crazy supernatural phenomena ever, but it all relates to the most average idea ever, which is a boy who wants to confess to a girl, a boy who wants to fit in with this and that club. The fact that this entire situation that's currently destroying everything around them is all because his desire to go to the park, to confess his love, that emotion mixed in with that power has created that chaos tornado, and holy shit, where do you go from here other than chaos and amazing epilogue? I don't know. I mean, I've been an avid supporter of Mob Psycho ever since Season 1, Episode 1, and it just feels like my dedication to this story is just continuing to be rewarded. It honestly feels like what started out as such a creative production style has progressively gotten better and more refined and more just what the hell are we seeing from season two now to season three. 
And the fact that when you really do compare how they kicked off Season 3 to where we're currently at now, it's really interesting how they gave us that nice slow burn intro to then go the craziest I would say we've ever seen. I mean, often we would expect to see Mob get almost isekai to then unleashing a chaos tornado that's destroying everything and potentially killing lives in the process? No, right? So it's going to be very interesting to see where they decide to end this show, but most importantly, what Mob's future will look like. Because Mob's future, it's always been one of those things that I've been humming and hawing. Would he be someone who would want to use his powers in his adult life, or would he want to be average? And over the course of the show, the average seems like the biggest spotlight, in my opinion. And based on what we're seeing here and how much he wants to lock away these emotions, like that feels like the only way possible, but... I mean, I was expecting a couple of people to die this episode from the boss to his brother. Like, they really had me on the edge of my seat saying, what are we seeing? It's both the most beautiful carnage ever, but most fearful because there's so many moments that are, are supposed to make you say, holy shit, someone's about to lose their life. And all at the same time, you're thinking, how can someone like Mob be saved when it feels like he's completely consumed at this point? Like, Mob Psycho 100 is without a doubt peak anime. It's 10 out of 10. It's a modern classic, in my humble opinion. And the fact that it's one of the most perfect examples of not overstaying your welcome. Mob Psycho, in the first season, if you would have asked me how many seasons would I like to say, I would have easily said five. Just because the adventures are funny, they're silly. It's not often you have, like, an Esper story in the way that they're doing it. But quickly, over season two things started to change. Things started to feel like we were actually seeing great progression and we weren't overextending lies like Regan's lies to Mob or anything like that. And now that we're approaching the end of the stories, three seasons, three one-core seasons, so many stories overstay their welcome. Not to say every story only needs to be 30 episodes worth of content or so, but the fact that Mob Psycho was bold enough to say, because this is the type of show that you would see so many production committees or you know, publishers say, just keep giving us more and more and more. It's like, no, this is a short, precise, to-the-point story that knew what it wanted to be from the beginning, and the fact that it just continued to evolve, it wasn't afraid to kill off characters, wasn't ex afraid to say average is okay. Like, just the fact that everything about this show just felt like it was confident, and it never felt like it was stretched beyond what was initially planned, it, you have to hand it to it. Like, this is what I would consider to be a magnum opus for an author and I really feel like one hit the absolute jackpot with making this show and Bones did the exact same thing when bringing this to the anime medium and I just absolutely love it if my praise isn't obvious enough. But either way I leave another episode with ah, damn anxiety, excitement, terror all mixed into one but we'll see where it goes. It's uh, been a goddamn pleasure to watch this one and I'm excited if not terrified to see how it's gonna wrap up next week but thoughts, feelings, theories, yourself if you got any down below leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here if you want to go the extra mile there's the patreon i got a bunch of live reactions going on over there and you can also get video shout outs like a few are about to get here so we got steel water rain reaver and i love ants so i appreciate the support everyone please take care and have a good one